Nintendo Wii here, welcome back to Let's Play Retro Games. On today's episode, I'm going to be telling you five of the best platformers on the SNES. So let's get started. The first game we're looking at here is called Sparkster. It's a sequel to one of my all-time favourite games on the Sega Mega Drive, Rocket Knight Adventures. This game isn't quite as good as that, but it is really an amazing platformer. It's so much fun. There was also another sequel on the Mega Drive, but the main difference between that one and the SNES one is the fact that on the SNES you can press the L and R triggers to sort of dash one direction or the other, which makes for some really interesting gameplay mechanics. At first I didn't even realise that was an option in the game, so when I did, the whole game became a lot easier. I actually did a video about this game a few years ago, so I'll put a link in the description. The first game we'll be looking at is Sparkster for the Super Nintendo. The game also has some very fast paced levels which break up the constant platform in action. These levels include a fast level on the back of a crazy mechanical bird that shoots lasers. As well the game itself is really nice, it's super bright and colourful, the music's fantastic. I would highly recommend Sparkster if you enjoy the Mega Drive games and want something a little bit different. The second game we have here is called Pluck. I'm sure you've heard me talk about this game before, I actually also did a video on this game a few years ago as well, so I'll link that in the description too. I was quite surprised I haven't already talked about this game actually. This is Pluck for the Super Nintendo. Definitely one of my all-time favourite games. Pluck is one of the weirdest game ideas that I've ever seen. You play as a limbless hero, yes, before Rayman was even a thing. The whole basis of the game is that you're trying to find your flag. It plays really, really well. It's got lovely, cartoony, colourful graphics and an incredible soundtrack. I actually remember the first time I saw this game was on a videotape and they mentioned just how amazing the award winning music was. How do you describe Plock? Well basically he throws his arms and legs at the enemy. Plock is a massive cartoon platform game with incredible music and stunning graphics. Not only will this game go number one in the game chart, but number one in the music chart as well. The game itself is also a lot of fun, there's a load of different control options, you can do a big spin dash like Sonic and blast through the enemies. There's loads of little hidden secrets and shortcuts in all stages which are really fun to find. It is a very challenging game, but if you're like me, you've played it a million times and you can go through the game no problem. One other thing that I really love about Plock is the fact that there's loads of different transformations that you can turn into throughout the game. You never know what you're going to get on the first playthrough either because all the transformations are hidden in these sort of present boxes. And it's really fun just to see what they come up with, what you come out as. For example, this firefighter one here and it's certainly one of the most unique games on the whole system. Next up, this game was at one point my favourite game of all time. It's still right up there, probably in my top five. This is Kirby's Fun Pack, also known in America as Kirby Superstar. It was also remade on the DS under Superstar Ultra as well. This game is by far the best game in the entire Kirby series. This game claims to have eight games in one. Really, there's about 12 if you include the mini games as well. Some of my favourites are Revenge of Meta Knight, which is sort of a whole big story thing with interactive cutscenes that play out through the game. It's really cool the way you sort of go through Meta Knight's ship and you keep getting blasted off to all these different areas. My other favourite game on this collection is uh, The Great Cave Offensive. I've played this through quite a few times now in single player and with a friend because you can have a friend join in whenever you want. If you're new to the Kirby series, maybe you've just played Kirby Star Allies on the Switch, Definitely go back and check out some of the earlier games in the series because they are quite a lot more challenging and a lot more fun because of it. Donkey Kong Country 2 for me comes very very close to perfection. It's almost the perfect game. The difficulty is spot on for me. It's got infinite replayability. I've, I've lost count of the amount of times that I've played through this game. I love the new animal buddies that they included such as Ratley, the snake. The new stage designs and the aesthetic of the whole game is just brilliant. I love the whole pirate theme of it. Absolutely incredible game. Every single thing about this game I adore. The graphics are amazing. The music is the best in any SNES game ever. Possibly any game ever. Amazing work by David Wise in this game. It's really phenomenal. The gameplay is really, really smooth and it's also a big improvement over the first Donkey Kong Country game because of the inclusion of Dixie Kong, my favourite Donkey Kong character. I've been playing this again quite recently on the Super NT and I still absolutely love it. I could just go on about this game forever, I really could. It's also on the Wii U, it's on the Wii, I think it's on the 3DS. 
So really, if you've got any of these systems, go and see if Donkey Kong Country 2 is available to download. You will not be disappointed. Like I said about Kirby, if you've just finished playing through Tropical Freeze and you're sort of interested in where the series started, this is a fantastic starting point. I highly recommend it. I like it a lot more than the first and third entries in the series too. So I just said that Donkey Kong Country 2 is perfection, so what could possibly be better than perfection? Well, here it is. Super Metroid. I wasn't sure whether to include it on this list or not. I actually put a poll up on Twitter and about 70% of people said that it is a platformer. So here it is to round off my five best platformers that aren't Mario. By far the best game in the Metroid series and yet another game that shows why the SNES is such a fantastic machine. Super Metroid is everything you could ever hope for from a Metroid game. It has tons of atmosphere. From the moment you turn the game on from the title screen all the way up until the end credits, it's incredibly absorbing. The level design is second to none. I just love the fact that there's so many interesting items and upgrades the entire way through the game. You're never left n without anything to do. The maps in this game are huge, it's really expansive, and even to this day speedrunners are still finding new ways to play it. That's why my number one game on this list is Super Metroid. So on Twitter I actually asked a few other people some of their favourite SNES platformers, so I'm going to have a look through now and see what you guys told me. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Nintendo Wii, and maybe I'll get featured in a future video. So let's have a look at what they had to say. So Simon Davidon said Yoshi's Island. I guess technically Yoshi's Island could be in this video, but it does have Mario in the title, so I decided not to include it, but that doesn't stop me saying that it's an incredible game. And if you've got a SNES, definitely check out Yoshi's Island. Josiah says Super Castlevania 4. Again, like Metroid, I wasn't quite sure if I should class this as a platformer or not, but I guess it kind of is. I would call it more of an action game, but... So yeah, I absolutely love Castlevania 4. I love all of the original Castlevania games, actually. Maybe if I make another video in the future, I would recommend Castlevania 4. It's great, it really is. Tom and a few other people actually said Mega Man X. Another game that I would probably class as an action game more than a platformer, but it is still a platformer, and I'm an incredibly huge Mega Man fan, so... If I do do another one of these videos, which it sounds like I really should be doing at this point, then Mega Man X would probably be right at the top of that list. And it's coming out on the Switch later in the year, in the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, so really looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to playing some of the later games in the X series, which I haven't actually had a chance to play. 60 and a quarter, I already said your pick, and it was number one on my list, Super Metroid. Good choice, and he also backed up the fact that it is a platformer and not an adventure game, so thumbs up to you. And Rob here, he said Aladdin, Pop and Twinbee, I think he means Twinbee Rainbow Bell Adventures because that's the platformer one. I actually did a video about Twinbee, the platforming game, a few years ago as well, back when I was trying to do these Retro Game of Week videos. So another video for the description, so go and check out this extremely long description and get stuck into some of my older videos. So thank you very much for watching. Please let me know in the comments some of your favourite platformers for the SNES. Don't forget to check out my Patreon in the description, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye!